understanding to how people communicate, really effective for deadlocks, understanding values, but also too, as to what uh, Johnny identified, was um, if you have uh, communication blockages, how can you then uh, unlock that? Looking at motivators, uh, looking at some of the aspects of uh, communication styles and approaches in, in regards to that. So the reason I've got you just to turn to page 58 in your manual is that you'll notice it's a notes page, it's a blank page. So what I wanted to do was to um, add some information um, that you may not have seen. So I'm going to get you to draw some of these diagrams and then we can build up on this um, uh, fairly quickly. So what I want to do is to have a look at the connections uh, between conflict but also to uh, communications and how that ties in with uh, interaction strategies in regards to that. So in your workbook on page 58, I'm just going to get you to draw a very simple model and then we can build a picture from there. So there's different types of conflicts. There's actually four uh, types of conflicts. And one of those types of conflicts is uh, me and me conflict. So think about me and me conflict. It's all of those, it's intra-conflict, it's those things that are going through your head and it's those sort of thought processes. And so really, uh, a simple way of just identifying me and me conflict. So as an example, why would a person not delegate out a task? What would be some reasons why somebody would not do that? Because he's only interested in his best interests? Uh, yeah, so it could be about self, could be one motivator for that. What's another reason why somebody would not delegate out a task? What's it being trouble on? Okay, so it could be an element of control. He's not trusting others. Oh, okay. Could be a trust factor. What's another reason? He's thinking that he's superior and he can do that task better than any other. Oh, okay. Uh, but also, it's, so what we find is this different sort of thought process to, to, to what happens. And you probably felt that yesterday when you signed your name with your opposite hand. Yeah, you had the, those thought processes that were happening. So this is really interesting when you're moving into a negotiation, there could be thought processes that's actually happening that can help or hinder your negotiation process. Uh, another type of conflict is uh, me and you type conflict. So if you had somebody who was fast paced and action orientated, when do you think they would want something done? Do you think they'd want something done in three weeks time? Or do you think they'd want something done yesterday, straight away or yesterday, yeah. So if they were negotiating with somebody who was a slow paced analytical type person, how do you think they would want things to be done? Do you think decisions would be faster or do you think decisions would be slower? slower? Yeah. So if you look at different types of conflict, even the pace of how uh, the communication or the speed of the negotiation, there could actually be natural conflicts that we need to think about, okay, well, what's my style? How can we adjust? We can then start to think about uh, me and my job as a type of conflict. So there's probably parts of your job that you love to do, and there's probably parts of your job that you would hate to do. So, for example, um, who here loves paperwork? Okay, <laughs> who here hates paperwork? Yeah, okay, so if you think about that, there could be part of the process that you love, and there could be parts of the process that you will hate. As humans, we move towards those things of pleasure, and we tend to move away from those things of pain. If we associate things with pain, we'll actually have a different dialogue to what's happening within our mind. So then another type of conflict is me and my company. So if you're a person who is fast-paced, action-orientated, likes independence, but you're finding that the environment or the company is slowing you down with detail uh, and procedures, what do you think the conflict would actually be there? So if you're fast-paced, action-orientated, like the freedom, but if you're stifled by process and procedure, where could the conflict come into? It will 
So what's important just by identifying that there's different types of uh, conflict is it's actually normal, but we need to think about how can we identify that within ourselves, but also the person that we're negotiating with, how can we maybe reduce some of those conflicts in order to break down the barriers of communication? Start to identify that uh, different people that you negotiate with will have different needs. So, have you ever noticed that with some people, uh, some people uh, that you work with, uh, they might have a messy desk and other people might have a neat, tidy desk? Have you noticed that? Yeah. So, if you think about those needs, where do those needs come from? What we can then identify is that different people will have different needs and usually they'll have differences of values, they'll have differences of opinions, and also too, they'll have differences uh, in beliefs. So if somebody is fast-paced, action oriented that you're negotiating with, what do you think they believe or what do you think they value? Do you think they value plan your work and work your plan? Or do you think they value your good game as a fast game? The faster game, yeah. If you're negotiating with somebody who has a need that everything must have its place, what do you think they would actually value as part of the negotiation process? Do you think it would be understanding the clear? That things move along at a good speed. I mean. Yeah, or to the process, to, mm -hmm. to what they put in place. Mm -hmm. So from that, people will have needs, there's values, opinions, and beliefs. This then sets up how people think, but also to how they feel, how they feel. So uh, if somebody believes that uh, they like control, they, if somebody has a need for control, then they'll have a value or an opinion that they must control the negotiation. If they think that they're losing control, do you think they'll feel happy or sad? Sad, angry, frustrated, yeah? But if they feel that they're in control of the negotiation, then they'll actually feel a level of satisfaction. So all of these things actually set up uh, behavior. All of these things set up behavior. Now, as we've identified earlier, we can't get inside a person's mind, but we can have empathy. Would you agree? We can have empathy. So we can have empathy for a person's values and opinions, and we can have empathy for their thinking and feeling. But the only thing that we can actually see is their behaviors. Would you agree? So the research will actually show that people behave at a deeper level to satisfy what their needs are. So if people are like uh, icebergs, what's the analogy? What's the analogy behind the iceberg? You only see, what, 10% of uh, the problem? Absolutely, yeah. You just see that we can observe the 10% uh, of the surface, but at a much deeper level, we need to understand what the needs are uh, because those needs will actually set up the communication approaches, but also the science. So the questionnaire that you've done, the business behavioural styles, was really asking you questions around uh, what are uh, your particular needs. But what we can do as negotiators is actually observe what are the behaviours, because at a deeper level we know what's actually motivating uh, or driving those particular needs. <coughs> 